and then depart to the park. I want to challenge you to think about something with me. Your bulletin has the title of the message today and a flag on it. And someone came to me and said, the flag is upside down. And no, Linda Hare did not get the cover wrong. I asked her, find me a flag upside down. Why? Because an American flag upside down stands for distress, danger. And our nation that has been, in the words of Judge Robert Bork, who wrote years ago back in the 70s, slouching toward Gomorrah, has in recent days begun to run headlong toward Gomorrah. America, we said it last week, America as you and I have known it, is no more. Make no mistake about it, we still have more freedom here than most of the rest of the world where Christians live. The difference is that we have had freedom and we see it eroding. You don't miss what you never had. And we've had it. So I thought today for just a few minutes I would get your juices flowing and think about this matter of let freedom sting. Because you see, when you read the scripture on freedom and you look at what's being done in the name of freedom in this culture, you, there's two very different things. Just Think of me a few minutes when, when liberty promotes licentiousness, then the only thing that can, when it manifests itself as freedom, is going to have a stinging effect to it. Listen to the passage in 1 Peter with me. Chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. If you have your Bibles and want to turn there, I think that'd be great. If you don't have a Bible with you, we've got the text on the screens for you. I want to read this passage, and I'm going to read one more, just one verse from Galatians 5. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme, or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil. I want you to notate that. Not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. I want to add to that Galatians 5.13. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to... Pardon me in the wrong exposition. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Notice those two phrases. In 1 Peter 2, do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. In Galatians 5.13, do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. See, freedom in Christ is not a cover-up for evil, nor is it an opportunity to serve the flesh, but it's the empowering by the Holy Spirit to follow Christ, love God, love others, and serve the world. What are we to do when, when the freedom we have enjoyed begins to sting? We've had the freedom of, of gathering, and we still have it had freedom of speech. That's going away. Freedom of the press. That's being co-opted. Freedom. And we've lived in those freedoms. Our forefathers fought and died for those freedoms. We have men and women in the military who, who in the past have fought and died for those freedoms and who today are still on foreign soil ready to die for the freedoms we enjoy even as they are eroded from us. 
And so as we have celebrated freedom, and we've got to confess as Christians that sometimes as Christians we, we celebrate the freedom we enjoy in America as if, as if the cross is draped in the flag, and it never has been and it never should be. We just happened in God's providence to live in the greatest nation on the face of the earth, and that doesn't make us better Christians. In fact, I think the argument could be made that God's goodness to us, we unwittingly made a pillow Keith Green, who died tragically in a plane crash several years ago now, was, a, was writing Christian songs and wrote one about the church being asleep in the light. And when we get back to what freedom is in Christ, we have to examine our own lives and say, have I, and, and people, churches, church members have, I mean, our influence in the West has been decreasing because people began to look and realize that the moral majority was neither. A paper tiger. That the church in the West, the church in, in America, has played fast and loose with things where we should have been pursuing holiness. And become a cover-up for evil. Because people point the finger at us when we begin to stand, take a righteous stand for something, and they say, but how are the members of your churches any different? And I think that's the key. The, our, our forefathers, our spiritual forefathers in the first century were very different. And they were marked out because they were very different. And here's what I want you to learn to rejoice today. That as we see the freedoms eroding that we've enjoyed in this nation, we have an increased opportunity. I would submit to you more than at any other time in your lifetime or mine, the increased opportunity to live as Christians and be very very different. How are we to live in a day when, when the definition of marriage is gone and when, when those advocates for it a week later say it was never about equality in marriage. It's about the disestablishment of marriage. It's about marriage going away completely. It's about people who differ being made to submit. When we read that, and if we're not careful, we'll panic, but we shouldn't panic. Because what's happening is God is waking up the sleeping church in the West to enjoy our freedom in Christ, even as we watch other freedoms that we've enjoyed erode around us. And the night is falling. It's falling fast and it's getting darker and darker, but that does not make us be dismayed. In fact, we know that if we are being the light of the world, that the darker it gets, the more important light is and the more obvious light is. You see, our freedom in Christ is the empowering by the Holy Spirit to do something that the Scripture says we will do. Jesus said, you want to be my disciple, my student? Follow me. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. He summoned us to follow him. We've discussed this so many times in this place that, that it may be sounding redundant to some, but here's the deal. We must discuss it until all boots are on the ground, all energies are engaged to follow Jesus Christ. It cannot be a passive thing. Follow me. And we've taught here that by following him, we make the great confession. Not, not many weeks ago, one of our own young men made a public confession of faith in Christ. Doing publicly what he had done a couple of years ago in his journey. But publicly declaring Christ, making the great confession. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we follow him by engaging in the great commandment. 
Is freedom stinging you now? Are you, are you feeling like some of your freedom is being taken away? Then we will enjoy more and more the freedom we have in Christ. The great commandment. Jesus was asked, what is the great commandment? The greatest commandment. Well, he said it's to love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. We follow Christ and we do that by loving God increasingly. I, I hope and pray that as you're growing as a Christian that you're experiencing within your own life a greater love for God. That, that the hymn, more love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee, that's my earnest plea, that's my, that's my heart's desire, that's, that's what Paul said, I want to know him. Paul, you've written half the New Testament for crying out loud. I mean, you want to know him. I want to know him more than I've ever known him. I want to know him in a fuller way than I've ever known him. What do you mean, Paul? I want to know the power of his resurrection. Well, that means death, Paul. Yeah, that means death's got to come. So I can experience the power of his resurrection. I want to be made conformable to his death. Paul said, when I die, I don't want to die in my sleep. I want to, be, I want to die because I've been identified as a follower of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, you've got to realize some in this room will be given the opportunity to do just that. To die, be made conformable to his death. The great confession, you're the Christ, the great commandment. Oh God, I want to love you. You see, freedom in Christ is not a cover up for evil. It's not, a, it's not our little spiritual burqa that we wear around and nobody can see underneath it and you don't know what's going on underneath there. Freedom in Christ is running to the light. Loving God more and more. Knowing that as we love God more and more, we cannot help. We cannot help but love His creatures, creatures made in His image more and more. It doesn't matter how much they've lost their way. It doesn't matter how much they hate the church and they hate God and they hate us. They're still creatures made in the image of God. And our response to them should be love. The second is like unto it, Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. What a challenge that is. Can we honestly say that we love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves? Jesus taught that though. He took it right out of the Old Testament and brought it right squarely in the face of the Pharisees and of all who would be identified as his followers. A growing love for God, a growing love for others. Well, how, how do I love others? Because see, love is not, a, not just a word, it's an action verb. Paul teaches us that in 1 Corinthians. Love does this and does this. It does not do this. It's not this way, but it is this way. And it's, it's an engaging action. It's an intentional determination not to be a certain way, not to be envious, not to be arrogant, not to be puffed up, not to be rude. No matter how badly someone treats us or wants to treat us, that definition of love does not go away for a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not as long as, no, it is, period. I would submit to you that in decades past, those who have an animosity toward God have virtually ignored us. Brothers and sisters, we're not being ignored anymore. We're being targeted. Targeted. That shouldn't scare you. What that should do is challenge and excite us because that means, that means they're looking and they're wanting and they're going to test us. And Jesus told Peter just before the great horrible night we mentioned a while ago, Simon, Satan is asked to sift you. Now, he had to get permission to do it. He's asked to sift you. And when you return, did you hear that? You're going to stumble, Simon. And when you return. Brothers and sisters, in 2015, on the heels 
of our latest celebration of Independence Day, the independence of our nation, not our own personal independence from sin. Satan has asked and apparently gotten permission to sift us. You'll stumble, we won't go through it perfectly, but oh, the blessed hope of grace when you return. You read in Jeremiah where God said to his people, the Jews, I have used my servant, King Nebuchadnezzar, a wicked king. Nebuchadnezzar was God's king and Barak Hussein Obama is God's president his servant whom God is using and remember folks he's a tool <laughs> whom God is using on the church in the west to wake us up the only question that remains is will we wake up as this thing after this thing after this thing happens will we wake up Will we be, begin to feel so pressed that we must, we must be with the brethren and all pettiness is put aside? Because it's about being together with the brethren, knowing that two are better than one and three are better still. That we must be together. We must worship together. We must pray together. We must move together. We must serve together. We, we must do this. You say, how do you, finally, how do you, how do you love God more and love others more? You serve. You serve the world. Brother Norman gave us a great picture last week. I hope you took it in of all that was involved, all the people involved in this mission about to launch for Haiti. And it was basically every one of us played a part in that. You serve the world. That needs to happen more and more. We don't need to go into neutral now. We need to go and shift it into overdrive and be sure that we're moving forward steadily at a pace that we will not be knocked off our mission. You see, that's what the devil would like to do is take away a freedom that we've known, shatter a, a definition of a tradition that we've had and make us wring our hands and, and bury our heads in the sand. He would love to do that. He is sifting us. We must must not give in to his temptations and we must not lose our focus. Our focus is the same it was the day that Jesus said, I, I want you. I'm saving you. You're mine now. You bear my name now. You will live for me now. It's the same thing. Follow me. Love my Father. Love others. Love your neighbors. Love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. All these schemes against God are going to come crashing down. When they do, will we have hold of sinners who are plunging, who are slipping? Will we be rescuing the perishing? Will we be caring for the dying whose souls are dying? Will we be snatching them in pity from sin and the grave? You see, we can't do that and wring our hands at the same time. You can't do that. They're not available. Hands are not available to, to rescue if you're wringing hands. And so I want to encourage you today that while it may be the darkest hour we've ever known in America, that we have the brightest light to shine that America's ever seen. And more than ever, there are people who need to see the light. You may smell the stench of moral decay rising from America, but there's never been a better time for us to be the salt that retards that, that holds back the decay. It's a great day to be a Christian who lives in America. Not because America is going so well, but because we have the message of a Savior who died for sinners, as sinners, who rose from the grave, conquering every enemy. We have the message that they need, whether they want it or not, whether they want to hear it or not. Keep preaching it, keep teaching it, keep sharing it, keep showing it. It's the message, the only message that saves.
We have the opportunity to live in dark times. Don't be discouraged. Be determined. Use your freedom in Christ to love God, to love others, to serve the world around you. Let's pray.